Good morning. I'm Nancy Hall Behrens, Director of Congregational Life, Singles and Women's Ministries at Westminster. As with so many things this spring, I had planned on one thing for today, but I find I need to do a different thing. I was going to speak about a certain topic for this devotional when I signed up for this date, but events have overtaken my plans and so planned for things need to change. This has happened in so many aspects of our lives during the coronavirus lockdown. But today is happening because of the current tensions running through our communities and country in the aftermath of the death of George Floyd in Minneapolis about 10 days ago. And yet I think there is a meaningful and important way to connect my original topic with the current situation. Patrick mentioned community in his devotional yesterday on his way to talking about his individual interface with racism. This morning I want to lift up the collective interface of community with racism in light of the book, The Cloister Walk by Kathleen Norris, which the Flying Solo Group recently discussed in their quarterly book group. Although, although not chosen to coincide with being cloistered in our own homes during the coronavirus pandemic, it seemed a funny coincidence and somehow appropriate to read The Cloister Walk at this time of lockdown and isolation. However, the fact is that when Kath, author Kathleen Norris went to experience life in a Benedictine monastery, she was not in solitude as we might imagine, and as we have been in during the current um, quarantine, even as things slowly begin to reopen. Norris was in fact living in community with monks and other guests, taking communal meals together, worshiping together, singing, reading, learning, discussing, and living everyday life together in a variety of ways, even cooking, cleaning, and occasionally partying. We discover in reading this book that monastic life is not so much escaping others and the outside world, but more joining in community to live in harmony with others. Kathleen Norris writes, a monastery is a city in the ancient meaning of the word, as civitas, a place which stands for human culture in the largest sense and exists to serve the common good. She goes on to say that the holy city of a monastery allows an alternative vision of human relationships where beauty is more desirable than financial profit, friendship more precious than advantage, and solidarity in a common vision of human dignity more compelling than self-fulfillment. The monastic perspective sheds life, light on the basic reality that human beings are remarkably dependent on one another, that we cannot flee the city to escape from others, that we are part of the city of the living God, and that we are challenged to make something of it. The Benedictines, among whom she was living in community, believe that the divine presence is everywhere, both inside and outside of the monastery. Norris leaves us with this question. Do you work, as Jeremiah reminds us to do, for the welfare of the city to which God has sent you? The reference is Jeremiah 27, 9, which says, but seek the welfare of the city where I have sent you into exile and pray to the Lord on its behalf, for in its welfare, you will find your welfare. And then in verse 11, for surely I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, plans for your welfare and not for harm, to give you a future with hope. And so it seems appropriate now in two different ways to think of the book, The Cloister Walk, and its emphasis on community. We can certainly think of the various ways that Westminster has continued to connect together as a community, even when physically separated. But we must also think of our cities, states, and country as communities which are struggling to learn to live together in new ways, where all races feel equally welcome and empowered, where all feel their voices heard, and where all feel justice is done, a future with hope. People often talk about the new normal, which we will experience as we come back together physically once the coronavirus is under control. But today we are also experiencing the need for another new normal as our communities try to come together in love and understanding of one another, working to fix those issues and problems which have perpetuated racial injustice for too long. Do we work for the welfare of the city to which God has sent us? No matter how large or how small our community is, family, church, school, neighborhood, 
city, state, country, world. Each community needs to learn how to function together as a whole, how to talk with one another, how to support one another, and how to work for each person's dignity to be upheld and nurtured. This is a time to reclaim a sense of community, to exist to serve the common good, to work, felt, to work for the welfare of the community where God has sent us, to build a new city, a new normal, to seek the divine presence in our lives and in all of our communities. With God's help, with Christ's love, and with the Spirit's power. Amen.